Good morning, everybody. This is a social studies lesson for April 30th. The items that you will need are your social studies magazine, a pencil, and the Sam's Life worksheet. So make sure that you have everything that you see right here on the page in front of you before you start working. Once you have those items, you'll be ready to go. Long ago and now. Was life long ago the same as it is now? Long ago, people walked or rode horses to work. Now, we ride on the subway or in cars. Long ago, people sent someone else to deliver letters far away. Now, we send emails through our computers. Long ago, people used lanterns or candles to see at night. Now, we turn on the lights with the switch. Long ago, people brought water into their homes with buckets. Now, we get water from faucets on our sink. Long ago, people cooked over a fire to make their meals. Now, we cook on a stove. Long ago, people used straw brooms to sweep dirt off the floors. Now, we use vacuums to clean dirt out of the carpet. Long ago, people washed clothes by hand. Now, we use a washing machine. Long ago, people drew pictures by hand. Now, we use a camera to take pictures. Life long ago was different than it is now. Okay, boys and girls, everybody should be on page four and five of your social studies magazine. We are continuing with the lesson changes over time. You should have just watched a video long ago and now, which kind of gave us a little bit better of an idea of just how much things have changed between long ago and now. Um, they really have changed. I mean, even from when I was a kid to now, things have changed over time. Um, last week, we learned a little bit about a timeline and how we can put things on a timeline in order to show how they change. And we're going to continue with that and show how things change over time by looking at different ways. Uh, we talked last week about putting a day, just one day, uh, on a timeline and we talked about a schedule. It was a school schedule and what a person did throughout their day. Well, today we're gonna talk about a couple different things here. If you look um, at your workbook right here, your magazine, at the pictures of Emily, there are three different pictures. Or, well, there's two and then a box. And in the first picture right here, it says, yesterday, Emily dressed for the for rainy weather. Yesterday, Emily dressed for rainy weather. Okay, so right there, it's giving us a clue word as to the time, right? And that clue word for the time is yesterday, okay? The next picture, the words underneath it say, 
today, Emily dressed for soccer. Okay, here we go. Here is another clue word. Today. So the first picture said yesterday. And then the second picture said today. Now let's go ahead and look at the third picture. There is no picture, but the word underneath it says tomorrow. All right, tomorrow. So that is our time word. Okay, the three time words we have here that show the change are yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So this is showing how Emily changed her clothes for three days, except what do you think Emily will wear tomorrow? Ballet, gymnastics, maybe karate or baseball. Who knows? All right, let's look right here. Underneath or below the pictures of Emily, we have three pictures of Sam. And what this is showing us is how people change from year to year, okay? So this is showing Sam over the years, okay? And let's see exactly what the years are. The first picture is showing Sam at how old? One year old. Then the next picture shows Sam at three years old. So it's two years later. And then the next picture shows, the, shows Sam another two years later when he is five years old. Okay, so that's showing Sam every two years, how much bigger he's gotten. All right, if they keep doing it, then they'll show him when he's seven years old, nine years old, 11, 13, 15, and they'll keep doing it every two years. Okay, let's take a look over here on the right side at page five, where it says the way people do things changes. All right, so the way that we do things change, has changed over time. Okay, look at the girl who has a telephone. This is the way people talked on the phone in the past. And then beside her, there's a boy on the phone. It says this is the way many people talk on the phone today. How have phones changed and how are they the same? Well, the only way that I can see that phones are the same is that we talk on them. Because if you compare those two phones, there's so many differences between phones from the past and now. Phones in the past had to be plugged into the wall. You couldn't take them with you. They had a cord on them. Um, you see the cord right there? It had a cord right there. Um, it had this big other piece right here. Um, it had a plug that, like I said, that went into the wall. Uh, you had to turn something to get it to dial and call somebody. Um, oh, they, they, yeah, they were very heavy too. But phones now, in, in the present, nowadays, like the little boys holding right here up to his ear, let me see. Well, they're light, you can take them anywhere. They take pictures, you can play games. Um, they remember everybody's phone numbers. You don't even have to remember somebody's phone number. You can just push a button and it calls them. These phones over here, like the girl is on, nope, you had to remember people's phone numbers or write them down and dial them. <laughs> So yeah, phones have changed quite a bit. Phones nowadays are like a mini computer, if you ask me, actually. That's what I think. But okay, let's take a look at the cars underneath. This is a car from long ago. This is a car from today. How have cars changed and how have they stayed the same? Well, let's see. They both still have tires, right? and people can sit in them and they drive. So that's how they're the same. Can you think of any other ways that they're the same? Um, I can think of, of a lot more ways that things have become different over the years. Um, there's a lot of changes to make things different uh, from the past and now to the in the present. Um, now cars um, have doors cars have windows 
um, yeah, you know, it had, that car had no top on it in the old days. You see right there, it had no top. And now this car has a top. Um, also, look at the pictures. Look at how different the pictures are between the past and the present. Uh, if you notice, this picture, these pictures over here, they're in black and white. And these pictures over here are in color. Even the pictures have changed over the years. So lots of things have changed. Look at the clothes in the pictures. Um, these people in the bottom in the car picture, they're all dressed up in fancy dresses and hats. And we only we, we do that when we're going to church or we're getting dressed to go somewhere fancy. But most of the time we, we get dressed in casual jeans and shorts and sneakers. So things have changed very much between the past and the present. All right. I'm, we're going to go ahead and switch to the next page right now. Okay, you should have turned your page in your magazine, and now we're on page six and seven. And on this page, we're talking about food and water, right up here, it's food and water. And how can we learn about how things were in the past, how people lived, what people did, um, how they went to school? How can we learn about that? Well, we can learn about that by studying it, okay? And that's what we're doing right now. So when somebody asks you, hey, how did they do that a long time ago before we had sinks, before we had grocery stores? How did people do that? You can say, I know, I learned about that in social studies. So if you remember in the video, they talked about how things, how people did things a long, long time ago in the past. And one of the things that they talked about was how people got their food and their water, okay? Now, I want to, to ask you a question. How many of you had to go outside of your house this morning to the well and fill up a bucket of water and bring it inside before you could drink or brush your teeth or cook or take a bath or anything else, wash your face? Did anybody have to do that? Yeah, I didn't think so. Why? Because we all have faucets in our house. Faucets just like that one right there, right? That's where we get our water from. We don't have to go outside and get water. So, just how much things have changed. All right, let's go back to the top of the page over here on page six. And let's find out a little bit about food and water. So back in the past, then, right, that's way back then, in the past, most people grew their own food. Now, I know a lot of us do, do grow our, our own food. For example, in my backyard right now, I'm trying to grow green beans and squash and tomatoes, but I'm doing that as a hobby. In the past, back then, people grew their own food because they couldn't just drive or walk to Publix or Sedano's or Walmart to the grocery store and buy food. It wasn't like that back then. There weren't grocery stores all over the place. People had to buy, um, make their own food or grow their own food. And then they also had animals. They would go and hunt for chickens. They would um, have hens at their house so that they could lay eggs and they would use those eggs to eat and they would go and hunt for other animals and bring those home and that's what they would eat so that's how they had that's how they got their food back then now look at the picture underneath it now today most people buy their food in a store we don't have to worry about um making our crops and making sure that we're taking care of them or else we won't have food um, throughout all of the seasons. We don't have to worry about making sure that uh, there's animals around the areas where we live or that we're living close to a, a stream so that we can fish for food, right? We don't have to worry about that anymore because now there's grocery stores or little, little stores, little markets all over the place where we can go and buy fresh food, fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, all over the place. 
Okay, go ahead and look at the top of page seven. It says life was different in the past. How was it different? How was it the same as life today? Well, long ago, people got water from a well. And that's what I was just talking about, is that people didn't have pipes that came into their house. Remember, we watched about the when they came over on the Mayflower and they just built their houses with wood. They didn't put pipes in their house to bring in water. No, they didn't have any of that. That's why they lived so close to the ocean or so close to some type of water so that they could get the water easily. So they would get the water, they would bring it and make sure that it was clean because you can't drink salt water, that's not healthy. That would make you very sick. But they would always want to be uh, set up their community close to the water so that they had, um, they always had clean water. So, but every morning, every night, any time they needed water, they would have to go to their well with their bucket. See, oh, look at the picture of the boy right here. See, there he is with his bucket. So he would go to the well. And if you look in the picture over here from a long time ago, there they are getting water from the well. And then they would have to carry the bucket back to their house. So not like us now where when we want to go take a bath or a shower we just go in and turn on the water and we're ready to shower no nope. and look at the pictures underneath people get water from a faucet or a water fountain just that's how we do it now it's so much easier if you're thirsty go to a water fountain drink some water go to the faucet pour a glass of water it's not it's so much easier for now now for us and things are only getting easier, right? It's so much different than it was back, uh, than it was uh, in the past. All right, let's go ahead and stop here. And then we're gonna go to the next page where you will need your Sam's Life worksheet. And we are going to do another little mini timeline about how people change over time. All right, boys and girls, we are right here on our last slide, and you should have in front of you your Sam's Life worksheet, okay? See right here, it says Sam's Life. Please make sure that you put your name up here and the date. If you want to put the date, it is for, let me see if I can get my pen here. It is for dash 30-20, okay? That's as good as I can write with my mouse. I'm working on getting a pen. Okay, so here we are on the Sam's Life Worksheet. And what we're gonna do on this, or what you're gonna do on this worksheet, is you are going to write the letter of each picture where it belongs on the timeline. So, we have a timeline right here. You see it? And on the timeline, it has different ages. One year old, two years old, three years old, four years old, five years old, six years old, and seven years old. And then down underneath it or below it, we have four different pictures. A, B, C, D. Okay, and this is Sam at four different ages. Okay, you can see it's Sam and he looks different in every picture because in each picture he's a different age. One, he's a baby, then he's a little bit older. If you remember, we did that one on the other page where it showed Sam at one year old, at three year old, at five years old. Um, so kind of remember that, keep that in your mind while you're doing this, okay? So you're going to look at each picture and you're going to decide what age he, he is in that picture and where it goes on the timeline. We're going to start and I'm going to help you with the first one, okay? And let's say our first one, we need to find out, um, Look underneath your timeline where the empty spaces are, where the empty lines for you to write a number. You need to find out where 
one year old, that picture, three years old, that picture, five years old, and seven years old. So, one year old, do you think, which picture do you think was taken of Sam when he was one year old? Do you think it's picture A, B, C, or D? One year old. If you said B, yay, good job. All right, yes, because that was the first one. So that is when Sam was the youngest, right? He is the smallest, the youngest there. That is when our timeline begins. So you should put the letter, oops, B right there for the first one. All right, then the next one, you're going to look and see, okay, three years old. Which one do you, which picture do you think they took of Sam when he was three years old? And then look at the letter in the corner and write that letter on the line. The next one would be five years old. How old, or I'm sorry, which picture did they take of Sam when he was five years old? And which picture belongs underneath the seven-year-old line. All right, so A, B, C, D, you're gonna fill in under the timeline. And once you're finished, you are all done with social studies for today. We'll see you tomorrow for social studies. Have a great afternoon, guys.